Hey guys, it's Spencer. Today my video will be on crested geckos versus leopard geckos. So these are not like individual. I'm not. These aren't like fully care videos. I will be making individual care videos on them. Um, but I wouldn't rely th on this for your full intel on one animal. I would not rely on this. Um, it's just the difference between what I think is best and. It's my personal opinion, and then you guys should have your personal opinions on your own things. So you guys can either choose crested geckos or leopard geckos. I personally like crested geckos more, um, just because of the way they live and the way they. I like the way their cages are. I don't really. I like having tropical cages because these are more like a desert-like animal, and this is more of a neotropical animal. Both are great pets, though. Um, so we'll start with the leopard gecko first, and I'll let Sticky go. That's Sticky, my crested gecko, and then this is Rocky, my leopard gecko, but it was, he's my rescue, so I rescued him from a friend. So this is Rocky. Um, he, I'm pretty sure he's just a normal, but he has a pretty cool looking tail. It's all white. Um, so food source for these guys will be pretty much just crickets and like, Crickets, doobie roaches, wax worms, and mealworms. You can feed horned worms to them too, but they gotta be kinda small, I'm guessing. I've never tried horned worms, so I don't really know for sure. This is an adult male. Not super big animal, but still cool. So this is more of the terrestrial animal terrestrial means on the they move on the ground they live on the ground and then this is an arboreal animal this means he'll be up in the trees hiding okay how are you don't run fluffy so this is pretty much as big as they'll ever get i there is giant leopard geckos but i'm it's, I'm pretty sure it's really hard to get them. I don't know too much about the giants. So, if they store all their food in their fat, all their fat in their tail. So, they should have a really fat tail. He just has a smaller tail right now because he hasn't been eating as much. But he definitely eats a lot when he wants to. But we just haven't fed him, like, probably two or three days. But once he's done eating, it normally looks huge. Um, most of them are really, really good eaters, too, so I have no problems feeding him. I just either take tweezers or throw crickets down, or if it's worms, I'll just put them in a dish and he'll eat them, or I can tweezer feed the worms, too. So I'll move over to their cages. I'm going to put my crusty gecko in his cage until, and I'm going to show you how their cages are. So... I'm gonna put him in here because we're pretty much done with him. Um, so this is his hot hide. So there, I don't use a heat light. You're not really supposed to use a heat light. Um, I use a heat pad. You definitely probably want a heat pad more than a heat light unless you're in a really cold environment. But you de need a heat pad. You have to have a heat pad because that helps them digest their food. It helps them with a lot of things. You definitely need a heat pad or you won't be able to keep this. This is, is probably as small as a cage I've ever go. Um, it's, I'm pretty sure this is a 20 gallon cage. And I have a water bowl in his cage and just a rock that helps him shed. And then this cool other rock hide, this is his cool hide. I do have a heat, I do have a heat light in there. That's what his hide is. I do have a heat light, I mean not a heat light, uh, like just a normal light. Um, but they don't like light, but they have something called a hide where they can hide from the light in. Um, so you guys don't need to be commenting and saying it's, not, it's bad to have a light, because I do know it's bad to have a light, but it, it doesn't kill them. Um, so I used to have them on sand, um, but... I, I didn't like it from the start, so now I just have a little bit of sand mixed in with cocoa husk, and he seems to do fine on it. It's just softer. Um, I do spray down his cage, 
Not that much though. So this is probably the size I keep it in. But I'm just getting a bigger cage because I feel like he deserves it. But if you guys can't have that size of the cage or whatever, that's fine because actually if they have too big of a cage, they'll actually stray away from their heat pad and they won't be able to find it and things like that. So I do keep it because it does cool down in my room and especially here in Oregon it can get really cold. So I do keep like a little bit. I don't always have it on, but I have a heating light. It's just like a, like one of those purple nighttime bulbs. I only turn that on if it gets too cold. So I definitely try and keep the cage between 80. This thermometer is not right whatsoever, but I'd probably try and keep it between like 80, 80 to low 90s mid 80s to low 90s something around there I feel like would be perfect for them they're from I'm pretty sure they're from like Iraq but I'm not positive on that Iraq Iran things like that I'm pretty sure that's what I'm guessing pretty similar geckos to them are African fat tail geckos those are really cool too so if you want something a little bit more interesting but like similar care to the leopard gecko you could go for a african fat tail gecko i do not own one of those but i'm sure you can find some video on him so this type so the leopard geckos have closable eyelids and they're nocturnal so they'll be out during the night so if you're gonna feed them i'd recommend you, you could throw in some worms during the day but you don't have to. I, I just feed like about like eight-ish to eight-ish, seven-ish. I just throw a worm dish full of worms in there, just some crickets. And he'll probably eat those. I leave those, the worms in for about two days. And if he's eating them, I'll leave them in longer. And if he's not eating them, I'll just take them out. So I, I like count how many worms I give him. So say I give him like 10 wax worms as a treat and he doesn't eat those in like the course of like two days, I would just take them out. I would recommend doing something like that because they don't always like to come out and eat. That's what, he's picky sometimes, but when he wants to eat, he wants, he'll eat like crazy. When he wants to eat, he'll eat like, he could eat like 20 something crickets. So now onto the crested gecko. So you could definitely see how this cage is long and they need more ground space to move around in. That means terrestrial, they'll be on the ground. This is a completely different setup. I honestly like these a little bit more. I just find them more interesting. So this is a tall, I'm pretty sure this is 18 inches high by 12 by 12. This is perfect cage for them. Nothing, you don't need anything bigger unless you're gonna like keep two females together. And same thing with the leopard geckos. Don't keep two males together, don't keep two males together. On both of them, don't keep two males together, or they will fight and they will probably kill each other. Females, it's a different story. Crested geckos on females, I would still be watching them heavily. But leopard geckos, they do okay, but they need a bigger cage, obviously. If you're gonna do two females, do something like that size cage. That's perfect, that's a 40 gallon long. So now on to this guy's setup. So I have a lot of branches. You don't need a lot of branches like this. It's definitely optional, but I like a lot of branches so he can present himself. And I have this really cool bendy thingy he likes to climb on. And a lot of plants he can hide behind. He has this little hide. It's like, I think, I'm pretty sure it's by Galapagos. I really like it. I keep a light on his cage too. It's not working too well. It's like it keeps getting unplugged somehow, but it's like a UVB light and then it's a nighttime light. It's pretty it's it's pretty cool. I mean, it's de you, it's definitely not required, but it's still pretty cool. I like it. Um so this is pretty much as big as a male crested gecko would get. Definitely a little bit bigger around. Um they lose their tails and they do not grow their tails back. 
so they'll just have this little tiny frog butt. That's what they call it, a frog butt. But leopard geckos, they'll drop their tail and regrow it back, but it just looks a little bit different. So now about his cage, it's not looking the finest right now, but it, it normally looks way better than this. So I just have Reptiso mixed with some cocoa husk with some moss. That's how I like to keep it, and I definitely keep it like that. I feel like everything's good like that. Um, this, um, you don't need any, I don't use a heating source for them. I'm, I'm doubting that you'd need one if you guys are considering to get one. Room temperature is just fine. I keep mine high 70s or high 80s. It depends like what outside is and what my room is. Cause I also have a thermometer in my room and it's 80 degrees right now. So it's pretty hot. So, like, I try to cool down the temperatures in his cage at night. And I'll actually spray down his cage. I like to spray once in the morning and once at night. So this is how I'll spray. So I'm going to try and pretty much spray all in the leaves because they normally don't drink from standing water. But he seems to. And I have this really cool leaf thing my dad found that I really like. He has a little bit of poop in that, but that's gotta be cleaned out now so I'm pretty much just gonna spray this mossy thing because it's like actual moss too and he'll go lay in there at night and then I'll spray all the leaves in the back and then so that's what I'll do at night but my morning ones a little bit more heavily they are from New Caledonia. They're a New Caledonian species. Uh, that's probably my favorite island in the world. It's, I'm pretty sure it's north, north of Australia, and it's in the middle of Australia and Fiji. And they have a lot of really close relatives. Um, they're related to gargoyle geckos, which is one of my favorite geckos personally. And also Lichianus, that is my favorite lizard. Mm, I wouldn't say favorite lizard, I'd say gecko-wise. Um, yeah, they have chihuahuas, things like that. They're all really good animals, but I like the crusty geckos because they're normally a little bit tamer than the Lichianus. And not everybody can afford a Lichianus because they're a lot of money, like 800 to thousands of dollars. But this is the size cage I keep them in. It's not a hard cage to find at all. This is the most recent one I found, same size. This is the Exoterra one. Um, 12 by 12 by 18, perfect cage. This one came with this background, which my frog loves. Um, some plants. Um, I'm pretty sure it did come with dirt. And it also comes with a thing in the middle it's like a looks like a tiki guy they get to live up to 15 to 20 years old and both of these geckos have a crazy amount of color mutations like there's there's like dalmatians and crusty geckos whoa there's like dalmatians and crusty geckos it pretty much gives them a lot of spots obviously and then there's like all white leopard geckos there's if there's so many different colors you can get and there's like red crusty geckos there's so many things and you can also do naturalistic vivariums in these cages and bioactive setups that's what I'm doing right now like I have my springtails which are going crazy I'm gonna I'm have a I have the Puyallup reptile expo soon um which I'm excited for, I'm going to get isopods, a lot of leaf litter, more moss, um, and springtails, and a lot of isopods too, because I need isopods, and, <laughs> and that's what I'm definitely going to get, because when I'm going to make him a naturalistic vivarium, and a bioactive setup, so I will be getting a I might get a bigger cage for him, but I'm not sure. I might get the 18 by 18 by 18 exoterra. I'm not fully sure about that yet. 
but I'm getting this really cool water dripper. It's an Exoterra water dripper. Exoterra is sending me some stuff. And also getting, I might be getting, I might put springtails and isopods in his cage, but I kind of want to because I heard, like, if you get, I forgot, I think it's like, Dwarf purples, they'll eat crusty gecko diet. Dwarf purple, I'm pretty sure those are isopods. And so, here I'll show you what my crusty geckos, well, my crusty gecko eats. These are the ones I'd recommend. <sighs> He'll like these. So, out of all things, he's been eating this the longest, but definitely not the most. The Rapashi crusty gecko diet. This one can be expensive. I don't, it's not my favorite. It's obviously not his favorite because he won't eat it whenever I put it in there. This is his favorite. Pangea is his favorite. This one's like literally gone. There's probably one last cup in here. This is one of his favorites, watermelon mango. Definitely try this one. You could get, this is what I did. I got probably like four of these packs and four something packs like that. Just of all different types of flavors. Not big packs whatsoever. Not super expensive either. And then test out all the flavors. And see which ones he eats the most. Like watermelon. The watermelon mango. He ate that like crazy. And then there's also the Pangea fruit mix with insects. He likes this one too. Um, I got enough of this. I'm probably going to have to get more of this. But this is easily his favorite. The banana apricot. Oh my gosh. I don't know. It's probably only been a month or two. And he's gone through more than half of the bag. I got this at the last reptile expo. And it's just. I almost already need more too. <laughs> um, so pretty much. I'll actually make him up some food. Because he actually needs some. So I can actually show you guys how I make his food. So, I will be feeding the banana apricot. That's like the normal one he gets. And it's probably his favorite. And this is definitely not just the only thing they'll eat, too. They'll always eat cricket. They can eat crickets and worms and things like that. But I, I've never fed him worms. I've fed him crickets. He's, he's a hunter. Definitely likes to hunt. So... I get about, this is how much he eats, definitely not that much, but it's, it's, and if he eats more during like the next day, I'll just give him more. So I take this little chopstick thing and I just mix it in and now I need more water. And you want it, I think it's, I like mine like pretty much the consistency of ketchup. That's what I like to do. That's what I do. If I were you, mine won't eat anything like super wet and super dry and clumpy. He's pretty dang picky. And it's, some, it's sometimes really annoying because sometimes I have to restart, <laughs> which sucks. So mix it up, good amount. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Yeah, probably just about right here. That's probably good enough. Ew. So, I'll let you look at him before I feed him. So I can clean this off. Then I pretty much just like dab it. He doesn't eat it right away off the chopstick thingy. You have to get him kind of hooked on it, so you got to get him the... I just kind of like dab it in his... near his mouth a little bit. Let's see. There he goes. They do not have... their eyes do not close. They do not have closable eyelids. So they'll actually lick their eyes. It's probably my mom's favorite thing about him. And they can be kind of flighty sometimes. He 
he just like devours this stuff. He'd probably do this for hours, but I'm not doing that for hours. So I'm just gonna put it down here for now. But normally he'll just go. Uh, normally I'll put it up here, but I'm gonna get like this cool ledge thing. I'm gonna put right here, so it holds like a cup. Dixie, this, this is just like a Dixie cup. That's what I like to use. So you can get like two Dixie cups. One's full of water and one's full of um, the Pangea mix or whatever mix you decide to use. A lot of other companies make mix. And then they, this one company, um, I was going to buy a Crested Gecko from, from the last expo. Um, they had this like, for like when you breed them. They have this like healthy mix for the females and you like put it in the diet and then you mix it I guess and it's really good for them. And then they also have like other healthy things in it. I want to try that but if you guys know about that just like anything like you add to like the diets to make them like better for them. Definitely let me know. And supplements. So the calciums I use for these guys, um, I don't put calcium in his Pangea. I don't even know if he can do that. I th I'm pretty sure it just like clumps into like a bunch of like balls. And then so when I give him crickets, he will have vitamin with D3 because they don't absorb D3 from the UVB lights. And same with the leopard gecko. Pretty much every meal you'll probably want to do this. Uh, mix the, this is the D3, and there's the bite. So, I'm almost out of this. Um, so, this is the stuff I use for the Crested Geckos, the D3, and the Leopard Geckos as well. So, they need this, probably, you can do... If they don't like it, like, he doesn't always eat it sometimes, but if he doesn't, I mean, I'll just, like, give him some with calcium and then some with not. And then, also, Herptivite. This is what I use, the Herptivite. I like this stuff. It's not calcium, really, but it's more of a vitamin. It's just pretty much just vitamins. Um, with crickets, it, I don't normally give him crickets as much anymore. Um, so if I did give him crickets, say, twice every, twice a week, say I did that, I don't do that, but just say I did, I'd feed him normal crickets, just probably with D3 calcium, um, some with and some without, and then next cricket feeding, I'd add some herptivite to it with no, with a little bit of calcium, but definitely not all the crickets should have these. Just because sometimes it smells like mint kind of or something like that. It just smells like mint to me. But he doesn't like the smell. He won't always eat it with the stuff, that stuff on. But he, he doesn't seem to mind as much. So if you guys are deciding between the Crested Gecko and the Leopard Gecko, still do a little bit more research. But personally, my first choice was the Crested Gecko. That's one of my favorites. Same with the Leopard Gecko. I just like him better. If you guys like the tropical, go with the Crested Gecko. If you guys like the desert, go with the Leopard Gecko. So that was it. Um, it's it's your choice. I wouldn't go off anybody else's saying. Like if someone's saying like, oh, choose the Leopard Gecko, choose the Leopard Gecko. It's so much better than the Crested Gecko. I, I wouldn't do that. That's I wouldn't follow what other people say. It's your opinion. And they... They, I wouldn't let them tell you what's better. I'm not telling you guys what's better. I'm just saying I personally like the Crested Gecko more. But I also like the Leopard Gecko as much too. So they're both great though. They're perfect starter pets. Easy, easy, easy to take care of. I also have, um, if you guys are looking for any other Crested Geckos or Leopard Geckos, but anything besides that, I also have a um, Best Beginner Pets video. I have the frogs, I'm pretty sure in that, lizards, um, and geckos too, obviously, and some snakes too, so if you guys are looking for anything else, um, definitely check out my channel, 
and please like and subscribe to this video and see you guys next time.